Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran talks about this concept and alludes to this concept of ihsan. And the Prophet sallallahu defined it as well in the famous hadith of Jibreel which we'll get to in a moment. This word ihsan in the Arabic language comes from the word hasuna. Hasuna means something that is very beautiful, very handsome. So ihsan is in the verb form four, which means to be excellent, show excellence, to show goodness in something. So the great fifth, uh, fifth century scholar Imam Raghib al Sahani, he mentions in his Mufradat, the al al Quran Karim, he discusses this concept of Ihsan as well. And when he begins to discuss it, he says something kind of strange. He says that Ihsan is a quality that's a notch above the concept of Adl. Adl meaning justice. He says justice is to perform what you need to perform. You you go to you need to clock in at work at eight o'clock. You need to leave by you can leave by four. So Adl is you clock in at eight, you leave at four. You do what you're supposed to do. No? You you do exactly what you're supposed to do. That's what Adl is. So you you you, uh, you perform your responsibilities, whatever rights you are supposed to have, you take your rights. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what Adl is. But then he says, Ihsan is something more. He says, Ihsan is an yu'tiya akthara mimma alayh wa ya'khudha aqalla mimma lahu. He says, Ihsan is that you exert more than what you are responsible for, what you are expected of. And you take less from what you are, uh, what, what your right is. You take less. So if you are allotted to take seven vacation days, you take two. If you're supposed to come from eight to four, you come from seven to five, for example. So you give more and you take less. That's what Ihsan, that's how he defines Ihsan. And you أَكْثَرَ مِمَّا عَلَيْهِ You give more than what's expected. وَيَأْخُذَ أَقَلَّ مِمَّا لَهُ And you take less than what your do right is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about both of these words, Adal and Ihsan, in the verse that we recited. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْءِ يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did amr, he commanded justice, yani adl, and excellence. If we can translate ihsan as excellence. No. And Mufassirun, they talk about it very similar to how Imam Raghib talks about it in his book. That adl is that you do what you're responsible for. Yeah, Which what the responsibility is, you perform that. And ihsan is ila man asa ilaykum. Okay, you 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 what example they give is if, if somebody wronged you, you still forgive them, even though you might be completely right. You might you might be on complete you might be completely correct. You are completely correct. But showing ihsan is all right, I still forgive you. That's an example, Al-Af. And Muqatil, he defines it, he says that Al-Adl, in, in the verse, Al-Adl means At-Tawheed. Al-Adl is At-Tawheed, that you're showing oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ihsan is Al-Afu an nas So this concept of Hukuk of Allah and Hukuk al-Ibad, that's how he defines it. That you show the rights that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, you give the rights to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he deserves. And you also give rights and more to the people. You forgive people. That's what Ihsan is. Ihsan isn't just, you know, I just do something good for them. That's not what Ihsan is. Ihsan is you, somebody did something wrong against you. You have a right against them. You can take that right if you wanted to. But 
you show what Hassan, you're like, know what? I'm good. I'm good. I'm going to forgive you because my hope is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me in the next life. That's Ihsan. No. That is what we call Ihsan. And there's a, there's a strange incident that's quoted uh, in Adab al-Mufrad. It mentions that بَيْنَمَا النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِفِنَاءِ بَيْتِهِ That one time the Prophet ﷺ was sitting in the courtyard. بِمَكَّةَ جَالِسٌ إِذْ مَرَّ بِهِ عُثْمَانُ مَدْعُونَ that when he was sitting in the courtyard of Uthman ibn Mad'un, he happened to pass by him. فَكَشَرَ إِلَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم. So he began to smile. He began to smile looking at the Prophet صلى الله فَقَالَ لَهُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم. أَلَا يَجْلِسْ The Prophet told him, watch. Watch you sit down. He's smiling. Hey, come, come sit down. So he said, قَالَ بَلَى No, it's definitely. Why would I not sit down with you? So he sat down with him. فَجَلَسَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم. مُسْتَقْبِلَهُ فَبَيْنَمَا هُوَ يُحَدِّثُ إِذِ شَخَصَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بَصَرُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ While they were conversing, they were talking. And you know the Prophet ﷺ's characteristics. When he would talk to somebody, he would look at them directly. He wouldn't just be, you know, oh, like, I'm talking to you over here, just, just look at my phone over here. Or, you know, somebody's over there, I'm just, just you know, talking to them while looking at the wall. Or just doing my own thing, multitasking. That's not, that's not, his, that's not his nature. That's not what he would do. So in the middle of the conversation when he was with Uthman ibn Mad'un, his eyes just started to go up. He just started to look up to the sky. And that, that's obviously not normal for the Prophet ﷺ, but in the middle of the conversation. So something had to happen, right? Usman ibn Madhun didn't see what was going on. The Prophet ﷺ was, was, was looking and something was going on. Something was happening. So he said, فَقَالَ أَتَانِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم آنِفًا He said, أَتَانِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ آنِفًا that while we were discussing, a, a messenger from Allah came to me. A messenger, while we were talking, a messenger from Allah came to me. وَأَنْتَ جَالِسٌ While you were sitting. <coughs> so Usman ibn Mad'un, he asked him, فَمَا بَالُكْ Okay, what, 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 like what was going on? What did he say? What was the whole, you know, you looking at the sky, what happened? He said, he told me, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغْ يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ He came and he told me this verse that Allah SWT has commanded justice. Allah SWT has commanded that we show ihsan, that we give to our, our relatives and we, we, uh, you know, we, we do good to our relatives and we forbid indecency. And wrong and tyranny. يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ That he warns you so that you hopefully may you may pay heed to, to his warning. So Uthman says that حين, that he said ذلك حين استقر الإيمان في قلبي وأحببت محمدا. He said at that time, at that point, right at that moment, when he said that verse to me, something hit me. It just hit me. He said, at that point is when Iman was established in my heart. And I really love Muhammad. That's the impact of the Qur'an. That's the impact of the kalam of Allah that, that can have on, on a person's heart. If they allow it to. No. And we only have a few minutes left. But in, this, in the famous hadith that we've been talking about, I wanted to talk about the, that last third, the third portion of the Hadith Jibreel. We talked about, you know, a few khutbas ago, that what is Islam? Then we talked about what is Iman? The third question that Jibreel alayhi salam came and he asked, Amar ihsan What is Ihsan? And we talked about different definitions. But there is a reason why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is called Jawami al-Kalim. That he is able to convey abundant meaning in a small amount of words and when he was asked Amal Ihsan he said in, there's two narrations number one he says that, أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك that you worship that you when you worship you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see him and since you don't see him you know that he sees you he sees you other narration mentions that أن تخشى الله كأنك ترى that you have that خوف of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
as if you see him. And since you don't see him, you know that he sees you. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَى فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ He sees you. He sees you when you're alone. He sees you when you're in the public. So any amal that you do for his sake, whether the entire world does not know about it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. Whether the entire world is doing zulm against you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees that. And we can take so much motivation from these verses and so much motivation from the Sunnah and the seerah of the Prophet <coughs> That's why this concept of ihsan is so beautiful and those who show it are even more beautiful because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's clearly laid out in certain places in the Quran that He said Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen that He really loves those individuals that show ihsan It's not easy Yeah, you can be a Muslim Yeah, you can be a mu'min but being a muhsin, that takes a little bit more effort. And as Muslims, we always striving for more, no? We always striving for how can I do better? Just like at work. That's a concept of ihsan. How can I even how can I how can I uh, excel even more at my job? How can I excel even more at home? How can I excel even more in my worship? This aspect of excelling. Excellence. That's ihsan for you. And that's why he mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed and ordained ihsan fi kulli shay. That inna Allah katab al ihsana fi kulli shay. That he has prescribed ihsan for you in every single matter that you do. And then you would think, okay, maybe, you know, when he starts explaining it, he probably talk about, uh, you know, praying salah. He probably start talking about praying zakat or, you know, dealing with parents. Yeah, that's another place in the Quran. He does that, right? Wa waslain al insan bi walidayhi ihsana. But in this hadith, in this hadith, he mentions that فَإِذَا قَتَلْتُمْ He's talking about qatl. When, when you kill, فَأَحْسِنُ الْقِسْلَ Then you kill in a dignified manner. وَإِذَا ذَبَحْتُمْ فَأَحْسِنُ الْذِبْحِ When you sacrifice an animal, and you do that in a dignified manner. وَلْيُحِدَّ أَحَدَكُمْ شَفْرَتَهُ وَلْيُرِحْ ذَبِحَتَهُ What do you do? You sharpen the blade. And huh? you, you, you make... That, that, that pain, you reduce the pain as much as possible. Okay. So if, we show, if we're supposed to show ihsan to animals, to animals when we're taking its life, then how, how about to other fellow human beings? How about when we're in salah? That's, awla, that's obvious, right? Don't even need to mention it. Don't even need to mention it. That's what, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? He talks about in the Quran as well. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ Again, we're talking about the parents. He brings a concept of ihsan. And he says, don't even say uf to them. Obviously, you're not going to say anything even worse than that. Uf is the lowest degree of displeasure that you can show. So if that's not something that Allah SWT wants you to do, then obviously... Anything worse than that is, 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 is clear that you're not going to do that. No. And in every facet of our life, when we follow the seerah and we follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu we see ihsan in every, in every point. And this is a concept that we can apply not only when we come to the masjid, not only when we meet fellow Muslims, when we're at work, when somebody wrongs us, when we're out there playing something, in whatever the case may be, we can show ihsan, we can show excellence. In every facet of our life, there's a reason why he said, Inna Allah katab al ihsana fi kulli shay. In everything, it just doesn't apply to your ibadah. Everything. That he prescribed ihsan for everything. Huh? And when you show it, who are you doing it for? You're not doing it. Who is going to benefit? You're going to benefit yourself, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا You show excellence, man, that's for yourself. And you show, if you, if you show the opposite, then that's going against you too. Who are you doing it for? It's for yourself. No? 
You're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it for your mom. You're not doing it for your dad. You're not doing it for your grandma, grandma. You're not doing it for anybody else. You're doing it for yourself. And the uh, I'll end with this. The reward. We'll end with this. Uh, the reward. What's the reward? We're talking about doing this, doing this, doing this. All right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Yunus, He says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً That those who do ihsan, those who do ihsan, they're going to have husna and even more. They're going to have husna and even more. Husna refers to Jannah. Even more refers to being able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. That's what you get for Ihsan. Being able to witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. That's what happens when you show Ihsan. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to show Ihsan in every facet of our life and to inculcate the Sunnah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.